Welcome to this week's episode of Keeping It Real Politically, where you can tune in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on ATLTalks.com or located in, our Apple, in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. You are tuned in today to Keeping It Real Politically. This is your host, Antonio Higgs, a.k.a. Escaping the Matrix, where we talk about all things news today. In the studio, welcome back my guests, Melo the Great and Mr. John Ketricks. What's going on, fellas? Hey, I'm going to be here this week. Uh, Why are you getting all shot? Sir? <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, you, you could find me on Instagram at mellow.222.14 or Patreon now at mel- uh, patreon.com slash mellowtheartist. So, yeah, I'm ready to talk. Yeah, there you go. He's just living up to his uh, name, man, Mellow. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Beer Mellow. <laughs> this is uh, John Kenrich. Uh, yeah, and again, you can uh, call me Jersey, you know, and uh, representing uh, uh, the true folks of uh, the people who are right that uh, deny that pineapple but, you know, should never, ever be on pizza. Never. Never, never. That's a lot. So I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm thinking of a stand here. There are two types of people, people that put pineapple on pizza and then people who are correct. Pineapple is delicious. Right. P- p- pineapple on pizza, pizza is delicious. No, that's, 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 not, that's not correct. That's like, <laughs> pineapple on pizza you're is not, very realize, delicious. You, you're not realizing <laughs> cat when you're, when you're five years old, the cat's like, suck your soul, man. <laughs> <laughs> y'all go check out Melo, too. Melo is, uh, if y'all don't know, Melo is my kid. He is going to SCAD, Savannah College Art and Design. And he is a graphic design artist because he didn't say any of those things. And he does take commission work. He has a Patreon that he is pushing because he does have a manga that he is publishing right now. So you can catch up on his manga, which story is pretty good. So, yeah, y'all go and check uh, Melo out. What's your, what's your uh, Patreon? Patreon.com slash Melo the Artist. There, there you no go. No space in that last, that last day there. So, yeah. Right. So, uh... I guess we I guess we can jump into news today. Yeah, I've been gone for three weeks. And it's partially because of Melo. But uh yeah, I have been gone doing family things, getting his brother into college and then getting him back down here to get checked in. But yeah, so on the news today. So one topic I want to talk about, y'all know I'm a nerd, y'all know I'm a network security engineer by trade, and I do content creation. So they have this this uh ISP, if you don't know what ISP is, the internet service provider, called Cloudflare. I did not know Cloudflare was an ISP. They typically deal with cybersecurity and firewalls because I've worked with them before in a previous job. But Cloudflare was hosting this website, or they provide an internet service for this website called Kiwi Farms. And it's a strong right-wing political group and very controversial. But they had been threatening this trans person. They ended up making this person flee the country. Like, they was harassing them, doxing them. Y'all don't know what doxing is. Is when somebody get all of your information and release it out online for everybody to see so they can harass you online as well, too. The person ended up going to Ireland, hiding out one of their friends. They find out who that person's friend was and start harassing them over there too, like threatening them. So they end up getting in touch with Cloudflare and I guess kind of bullying Cloudflare and I wanted to emphasize bullying them. And Cloudflare end up blocking and banning them off of their, their platform. Now granted, you know, they, they are back up because they went somewhere else. But the discussion today is, how do y'all feel about an ISP like banning somebody from using their services. So I got questions. Now. So wait, Kiwi, the Kiwi Farm, the conservative site, had ran the trans person and their friend. Oh yeah, they're very conservative. Yeah, and they ran them out of the country. Yeah. And so in response, those two went back to Cloudfair and was telling them what happened and they got... Well, it was a group of people. Yeah, because they were bullying them all on social media. That's what they do. So they, they bully people online, they dox them the information, they harass the hell out of them. They even hack their stuff. Like they did their victims. They they hack their victim stuff and then redirect their stuff to other NFL stuff or they charge up anything. So they had one lady they did, um, they hacked her DoorDash account. I don't know how they did that, but they hacked her DoorDash account, end up ordering like hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of food, sending it out to her house. So they do malicious things. Right, this, so, this is Kiwi Farms. So just like there's three characters. Yeah. Um, there's um, you have Cloud Cloudflare is the internet service provider. Right. All right. Cloudflare is the internet service provider. Uh, Kiwi Farms is a conservative group. Yes. That was harassing uh, the victims. We'll call it the phone victims. Yeah, the victims. The, the, the victims of the, these uh, 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 trans folks that ended up running away to, to Northern Ireland. So those are the three characters, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, like you had the question of uh, like what were they doing? So it's Kiwi Farms was attacking these these victims, which is all victims. 
And uh, and so Cloud, the, the question on the table is: Is it correct that the victims appealed to Cloudflare, uh-huh. the internet service provider, uh-huh. to refuse service to, to Cloud Farms? Yeah, Kiwi Farms. Yes. Um, so that's the question on the table. Yes. All right. So, Jay, what, what do you think about that? I mean, okay, because I was trying to get into the, the context of the, the other bit of the response, which was like the harassing. Mm-hmm. So Kiwi Farm did that or the victim did that? The the, yeah. the, the, the victim did it in response. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Kiwi, Kiwi Farms was hacking the victims. So in response yeah. to all of that, the victims pleaded to cloud for a multi- other a group of people to have them dropped in from their services. Which, okay, I think if the site if the site itself was being used to do that and Cloudflare was hosting that, I think it's fair that Cloudflare would, get, would drop them for that, or at least find some way of blocking them from getting the information out. So like if, if the platform is being used to harass another person, again, if Cloudflare doesn't support that, I think it's fair for them to say, okay, we don't support that, so you're going to need to cut that out or you're not going to use our service. I think that's fair if you literally went as far as running the victim out of the country because you wouldn't get off their back. Like, I think that's that's a little too far. That's, uh, that makes sense. Like, I, I was trying to go with a, there's a two way to look at two ways to look at it. You have a uh, Cloudflare, the, which is a terrible name. I have a hard time saying this, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, I could not say that three times fast. Um, so this internet service provider, um, you know, they are running a business. They are. So, and so then well, I think what your kind of your point is like, all right, well, Kiwi Farms, you know, um, we're rejecting your business. You know, like there are other, you have other options, mm-hmm. you know, like, hey, you know, I'm a casino or I'm a grocery store. You know, there are other places to get apples. Go, go, go somewhere else. And uh, we don't like your behavior. We, you know, we, you know, we are rejecting your services. Now, I think the other bigger question, which is, I think is, is what you're kind of alluding to is, you know, now we're talking about internet service providers over, you know, regulating content. Right. That, I think, is the bigger question. That right? is what I was getting at. So, like, I, I could see those two things. The short one of a business saying, no, you can just, you know, you know refu- we refuse to, to, uh, to uh, we refuse that service. Um, and that's a good question. Um, I think also when you're looking at um, Internet, I, I guess I have a response to that where Internet, especially now, and you're talking about just broadcasting, broadcasting has its limits. And so mm-hmm. there is a First a First Amendment, free speech, you know, question. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're on a radio show. There are things you can't say on radio, right. no matter what. I did, like, I remember years ago, there was a <laughs> two uh, two zoo, you know, morning show hosts. They uh, they warned people that there was dihydrogen monoxide coming out of the faucets today. <laughs> and everyone's laughing, and you know, just in case, uh, that's just that's water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they got into big problems with SEC and all these organizations. It's like you cannot mess with. <laughs> you cannot mess with water or or things of like in societal nature, the you know necessities. Even though you're doing it now in Mississippi, but go ahead. Oh, bro. <laughs> but we're not talking about that today. <laughs> we're not talking about. That. I'm not saying like. Hey. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just referring to that, the fact there's precedent. <laughs> like, yeah. We can talk about Flint, Michigan all you want. <laughs> but like, so like, there's a First Amendment implications. I don't necessarily have a problem with this. I really actually don't have a problem with it at all. I think you're. These are um, the modern day terrorists. They are. I, I agree with that. My only issue when it comes to, and believe me, I am not in support of Kiwi Farms. Yeah. Especially, especially I think we're all, we all, yeah. well, we're that out of the way. We're not supposed to. Hey, y'all know I'm security nerd. Yeah. So when you hacking people's accounts, because yeah. I don't really want to have, you know, a ton of food show up at my doorstep. And I'm like, where the hell does this come from? And especially if I eat something I like to eat. Hundreds of dollars that I didn't even want to pay for. Right, yeah, right. Probably vegan food, too. I, if <laughs> my only. Uh, <laughs> Something wrong with vegan food because <laughs> you should be eating vegan food, John. Yeah. <laughs> but my only hesitation is, like you say, is like them governing content now. Had they been found illegal of a crime, then yes, I'm all for okay. Well, you know, you've been found guilty for what you've been doing, and now because of the, the because you're being found guilty, now we're going to hold you accountable for your actions. So basically. You put the investigation upon Cloudfair to actually go to do some research to figure out what was being reported to him was actually true. Even though I mean they're a cybersecurity company, so they, I mean they do have an investigative team, but still, uh, it's you know I because I, I can if if I can call and, and say something about you, I can say if y'all don't know John is is John is of the um, the vanilla nature. 
yes. and I can be like, well, yes. John is a racist. Yeah, John I, has been saying, all calling me the N word and calling me all of the the improper things. I want John to be kicked off of your services and your platform. I know. Well, that's I mean, that's a very good question. Again, I like I can go talk about free speech, harassment. You know, these are all things. They TV farms. I mean, from what we can tell, again, I'm. Oh, they're, they're, well, it's a, they're terrible. Are we allowed to use the word allegedly when it comes to hacking account? Or, no, I hate. Oh, we, I hate the term. I, know, I, I do too. Because it's, it's been proven that they were doing it, so I can't. Because yeah. I, I hate that term when you've been found guilty of something. They said, "Well, they're allegedly." Yeah. This is yeah. like, no, no, no. Uh, you're, you're guilty. Like that, well, that's my question. Like, do we have to use allegedly, or no. have they? They've been. They've been caught. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was caught. Yeah. Um, if they've been caught doing this, like again, like I don't. I have no zero problem. Yeah. I, I have no problem. Uh, when you're harassing, especially when you're affecting someone's life, um, that's their response responsibility where we live in a different age now than we did 20 years ago 30 years ago mm-hmm. where like you know even Edward Murrow Mar- Mar- and, and like newspapers and um, you know old NBC News nightly news they knew not to give any person's address out right there's a lesson they had to learn but they learned that you weren't allowed to do that whereas nowadays there's a reason for that and so when you're doing it on this this level too, you know, there's harassment, all these other things where you're getting people together to really ruin lives. This is terrorist action. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, you know, it's one of those, you, oh, do we have to wait for a court of law or going to be caught? If there's a reasonable, I think there's a reasonable step where you can just suspend maybe, do a, do a suspension. Yes. And, and then do official banning. Maybe that's the way to go, but then you're still disturbing a possible, you know, innocent until proven guilty profile or customer from utilizing maybe crucial services. <laughs> Yeah, that's, oh. that's my thing. I'm like, at least, get, well, I don't know this didn't happen because an old report came out said they got in a warning or they got a strike because, you know, YouTube, they do strikes. But and they're, they're really quick with those strikes, by the way. They, absolutely. They yes. And they don't give you any reason as to why yeah. you, you got a strike at all. They just say you got a strike. Yeah. And it's terrible. YouTube, y'all got to do better. Yeah. Hashtag Corey Kitchens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to support Corey Kitchens. You don't know who Corey Kitchens I'm is. Gonna, I'm going to say Brandon Shaw. No. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Kitchens is a big time YouTube gamer. I love him, and he's always uh, calling out YouTube for some of the stuff yeah. they, they was doing him, which was was completely wrong. He, he like basically one of those YouTube uh, backdoors. We can someone if if I was criticizing someone on on some popular person, and uh, they said, "Well, you're now like stealing my material." Yeah. And now like YouTube just oh, they're just taking down and just yeah. So it's yeah. To, it's so. And my only thing is with that because I I don't support any. I mean, these people in the room know me. To any right wing group, especially when you start doing hacking, because if you got the skill sets to do hacking, you're already dangerous. And you you hacking people like you brute forcing your ways into people's account, and then you got their credit card information, and you're able to like order things. To, yeah, that's terrible. But I still say though. You should have a chance to plead your case, and, and it's a cybersecurity company, so they can easily do. Re- I mean, they're the ISP. Outside of them having VPNs and proxies and stuff set up, they, and you know what? Actually, because they do have firewalls set up, they could they they could see the traffic themselves. But I still say, give them a suspend them first before you completely suspend them. Do an investigation. And then go into a bandit. Well, well, what's the other way? How about like uh, responsibility to understand your customer base? You know, as a guy from uh, New York, New Jersey, where the mm-hmm. mob has a huge influence, like, all right, nod, nod, wink, wink. Hey, man. You think yeah. of the to cares? Well, I'm just, well, I'm just thinking of any customer. We're like, all right, like, uh, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, a gun dealership, you know, just, Knowing, not knowing, I'm selling this gun to a known criminal or to, you know, there is a responsibility on a business owner, especially when, like, when you're dealing with these things, when there's the public safety is involved. Right. Like, you do, is there a responsibility on that business owner to know who his client is? Right. I, I, on the first place? Yeah, I, I agree. Because, I mean, yeah. they had the same thing happen with uh, the terrorist attacks they have over, overseas. So the UK did implement something like this. Mm-hmm. And with their stuff, they were like, what was it? So what we're calling for a ban there is features or essays calling for racial or religious violence, videos of violence with messages of glorification or praise for terrorists, mm-hmm. uh, posting inciting people to commit acts of terrorism or violent extremism, extremism 
messages intended to stir up hatred against any religious or ethnic group and bomb making instructions bomb making instructions are big no I mean I don't right. care what platform you're, you can be on YouTube you're, <laughs> that's automatic dismissal now I mean but that's the government right so the government listed that out and I'm okay with that yep. because they put the rules of the game out there and it was like I don't care who you are if any of your customers violate these rules we have set up either you're gonna block them and ban them or we're gonna block and ban you but now the U.S., because we're a capitalistic country, we, we would never, we would never tell a corporation what to do. You write a check, you're, you're gold. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got the golden ticket. Um, well, I think, like, at least by, like, this company choosing to get rid of them, like, I think it's it, it makes sense that you would say, like, yeah, they should probably, like, suspend the account first, or in this case, the, the site, mm -hmm. and then investigate. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, you got to know your customer. They have a history of doing this sort of stuff, but they have a history of that sort of belief, then it's like... I don't know. You don't. You don't want to wait on taking action on that, and then let them just keep again messing with these people, to obvious repercussion on their part. But then it was up like two hours later. But the website was back. The website was back oh, up. But different, but, different, different, but different ISP. Yeah, different ISP. That's always like I. I think it should. If you have people like that, I do think it. It should be something from a federal standpoint, to where the ISPs can be like, hey, yeah, yeah, it's not on me. Uh, you violated federal policy. And so now I get to kick you off because that way it's not going to make them look bad. They can say, hey, uh, you blame uh, the Biden administration because they, they get blaming everything now anyway. Blame the Biden administration for pushing the policy out. And I got to kick you off. It's, uh, it's it, this one of those times where I feel weird, oddly uncomfortable because I'm coming in from, uh, you know, like, especially when, you know, when I debate a, a conservative, uh -huh. like if they're constantly, you know, defending someone who's evil. <laughs> like, they, they are. On, I the mean, higher, on the higher point. Yeah. On the higher point. Whether it be Jaden Gruden or uh, uh, Gina Carano, who tweeted that thing, got fired from the Mandalorian or whatever it is. Like, well, no. Like, it's, like, like you have to defend that. Like, um, this is, one of the, again, one of those times. Where, but, again, the, the bigger point is, you know, internet service provider. A guy goes by the business, the business that, uh, uh, that Melo mentioned before. But I, it's also there is a danger here where we the rules and the goalposts are moving faster than we're catching up to. Right. You know, we had print media for for basically two thousand years, ten, whatever. Just for me, of, of what it was, would it be the town crier. You know, up until you had a limited amount of how a news source was or how just anyone got a message to distribute. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden. <laughs> it, it's, it's instantaneous and you can instead of like reaching 10 people at a time you're reaching uh, you know, 1 billion yes mm -hmm. and when you cast that wide net like these the horrific actions are normalized whether it be like Kiwi Farms is, is what our example is today um, I think I don't right now especially like what their actions are I on both levels I think there has to be something, what it is, to define, where you say, like, government regulation. When you're talking about people's safety, I think it's it's okay, especially if we'll take the law enforcement angle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm going to slam this guy's head in a, in, in, in a curb and, hey, man, just in case. <laughs> like, uh, right? Yeah. If you have a badge, you're, you're cool with that, right? <laughs> hey, no, 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 I'm not cool with that at all. <laughs> no, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm generalizing. I'm, yeah. On, on, on law enforcement, I don't mean it that way. But you know, we're, we have examples of like that. You know, when when it comes to public safety, we you know, on every level of law enforcement or or any enforcement, we just we we do have the we say it whether we mean it or not. Public safety first. We err on the side of caution. Yeah. I mean, here's my uh, another reason of my hesitation. Mm -hmm. I don't like what you do, but I like seeing what you do. Because if you're threatening, that means I can I can watch you and I know what your next your next plan is. Versus me forcing you off of any ISP and I send you to the Onion Network, which is the dark web for those that don't know, to the dark web. So now you can continue to do what you're doing, right. but now you're hiding behind and, and on somebody else's server that I don't have any access to. It's a tough one. It's, it's where how much power are you willing to, but you're still giving them power? Oh, they're always going to have power. And they, they, you know, and, and is that, exactly. I mean, just like 45's yeah. Truth, uh, what is it called? Truth Network? What is it called? Truth Doc, what, are, what the hell is it? Oh, that, 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 Truth, <laughs> Truth Social. <laughs> yeah, Truth Social. Yeah, they got kicked off because all the money they was losing from it, yeah. but yet they still... They, it's also known as bankruptcy.com. Yes, the, <laughs> yes, they should be because they haven't been paying the, the host. They haven't been paying the people to host their website. They didn't pay the developers, but somehow, some way, they're being sued now too by those very people. But they went to a different company and somebody else is hosting them now. Which, granted, I mean, you know, if 
if you got service, you can technically do it. But it's yeah, you know, it's, it's and then why are they able to have a network platform and they do almost the same thing as Kiwi Farms? So what has their thing led to action like Kiwi Farms? Has? Oh, this is forty five. Oh yeah, yeah, all his people, all his stuff lead to action. Oh. Yeah, this was a January six type stuff. Yeah, 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 all his, all of his stuff always leads to no matter what he says. Like that's the case. By that point, I, I mean, think it just depends on who's hosting it. Yeah, because I mean, we're talking about the, the, uh, the FBI agents raiding his Mar-a-Lago, his vacation suite, mm-hmm. and they already had somebody going to the FBI um, headquarters up in Ohio, and was shooting up at the, at the headquarters. Yeah. I mean, that, well, yeah, at that point, it's like. But he's 45, so he can get away with yeah. it. Yeah, and he's got 35, 38% of the, the population. Yeah. These are where everyone's Um And are motivated. <laughs> yes, you know, they, but, they are. Oh, man, we can go to that. But let's, let's, that's a dark road. Uh, <laughs> for this one, I, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. How about this? Uh, like, we're talking about these things, and I think uh, you know, trying to boil down what the problem is. What, what is the issue? Is the issue that uh, Kiwi Farms, you know, is until proven guilty, um, that they're taken down, you know, automatically? quickly yeah um, whose power is it to count you know take it down is it just is it cool to have an ISP be that discretionary yeah right? Uh, right because that's my thing is it, the only reason I'm backing them on this one is because what's to say and again I don't know the full details behind what Cloudflare did Cloudflare could have ran an investigation and found they was guilty of all the things they've been accused of they didn't release it to the public so I don't know so for me if, if they're just going by what the community says, well, that attack can be taken towards anybody. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's that double-edged sword. Like, you're right, but also, like, these, the victims. So where do they go? Yeah, and I feel, so believe, right, ooh, I feel so, bad for so them. Let's, let's put, let, I'm going to take, like, look, go with you and say, you know, I'm, I'm on your train. Like, all right, uh-huh. you're, you're right. Like, so let's just pretend that we're all in agreement. Like, yeah, we, this is, they shouldn't be, have the power to do this and say no. All right, if you're a victim, we'll, you got to provide them the something. Yeah. So who do you call? Like, suppose you live in Texas. <laughs> or, or Florida. Like, so, all right, like, can you call a government agency and get relief? I, I don't I don't see that. Right? You should be able to file. I mean, this person then fled over to Ireland. They should at least be able to file a lawsuit against him. For, I mean, that's what happened with Alex Jones. I mean, yeah, but how many decades did that take for that to happen? And then how many people died for that to happen? You know, died. Like, literally well, died. No, I'm talking about from him accusing saying that Sandy Hook was, like, fake. Yeah, so exactly. That, like, people died on that. Like, <laughs> like, like died from him and his actions. Oh, no, no, no. Like, like no, no people, were, like, people were actually dead, and he's trolling the dead. Well, that's yeah, but so I'm like, before he gets to that point. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, so because they did die from the, sh- the, the, the school shooter, and him saying it was a false flag or it was fake and it didn't happen, then that led to them filing a lawsuit against him. So it's technically almost the same thing. It's just nobody hadn't died as yet, and we pretty got nothing. Nobody dies from this, these people's actions it's, that yeah. we know of at least but it also yeah you're talking about like the difference in here again perfect example of this is the difference of victims right mm-hmm. so it's not the action is a victim so let's pretend like Alex Jones did this twice mm-hmm. to Sandy Hook uh, victims and these victims our Sandy Hook victims like obviously you know like alright like that sets the tone and just the exact same thing oh he's always trolling the trans community though yeah and but oh, like he's, ooh, he's so trans, trans people will have no relief yeah, they, they're, minor, they're a minority. They're, they're, they have no. They, you know, what are some? They have no one to call. So if they, I mean, no, if they, they feel they, a lawsuit, if they, would you, I, I like the idea of the lawsuit, mm-hmm. but I, I have no faith in it. Well, yeah, I mean, because right? you're talking about the judicial system. They're, they're still not getting relief. Yeah, you know, it seems more secure to at least go to the business, which cares a lot more about their identity immediately, and then at, le- at the very least, they can again start investigating it for you. Whereas you file a lawsuit, there's like so many extra steps that have to go into that beyond just the business saying, "Okay, well, I don't want to go under." Yeah, and that's why I say I'm fine with that. I'm fine with them pleading to Cloudflare to say, "Hey, this is what's going on. This is the evidence I'm providing to you. At least perform an investigation and then report it, not just saying we just close them down." But hey, we've been found. We, we checked their site out. We looked at some of their history. We do host them as well, too. So we looked at some of the previous data. They called themselves trying to delete from their website. And we do see that they did commit these acts. And because of those actions, so we don't suffer any business. We are cutting our ties with them. Now, they're free to go wherever else, but they won't be. They're having their site and their firewall protected on Cloudflare. It's, I think that's 
only flip, only fair, cloud flare, flare, fair. Yeah, 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 like you said, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah, by the way, like, we, like the big, largest crime is like the naming of their own business. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you're a cyber security company. What is cloud flare? Like, what, <laughs> what, what is the flare supposed to be in cloud? Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, get that at all. Yeah, it could be, like, cloud sparkles would be better. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's easier to say. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's, I guess what we're, we're looking for here is, because again, we're in a um, you know, modern day society where you know, internet is everywhere and like us saying like oh well, we're going to shut down uh, TV's moms well that'll, stop, that'll end that problem that's just I, again I'm not naive it's not going to happen um, but you know for someone like the difference between even you brought about Alex Jones like these the victims for Kiwi Farms, you know, these trans folks, they they had to move to, they had to move across the Atlantic Ocean to get away from. They them. did. You know, their their lives were both completely way more affected by what Kiwi Farms was doing than the, the Sandy Hook victims were were affected by Alex Jones. You say it was? Yes. No. Was, you know, was Alex Jones again. Alex Jones was it was. But they had to move too. They moved. Matter of fact, they moved like four or five times. The families, some a couple of families, not all yeah, a couple of, couple of families. families. Like it was, you know, some of them, but then it wasn't. But like they didn't move this this far, and they didn't go overseas. Yeah, but still, overseas. the hassle of moving. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. moving. They were affected, but like it wasn't as. I, I just like I just see it as like all right. Even if like I said to do the uh, equivalency, there just there is no relief. I don't see a relief for them. You right. know, call like final lawsuit. Uh, and you know, Sandy Hook. We all know Sandy Hook, and it's like all right. Well, these we, we root for them. Um. I I don't know if, if what we have to do is just find a process, right? Yeah. And that's that's what we're gonna have to work on. You know, is it on the, the business owner or is it on the government to create a law? Maybe so, but there's no law yet. So if right now, like the way is handled, I don't have a problem with it. You know, we we're trying to find relief for victims, and this if this is a solution to bear, I'm kind of fine with it now. Now, if it's a, if it's a poor president, we'll see. All right, well, moving on. Let's talk about victims. Talk about the victims of like the, the Native Americans that's here in this country and other countries. And I want to talk about the stabbing that just took place up in Canada with 15 dead. How many? It was like 20 injured? Uh, I th- again, the, the, the reports, I'm not sure. I've, I've tried to look at uh, a couple of different reports, but they're somewhat conflicting. Between 15 and 20 dead, at least 15 dead. Yes. At least 20 injured. Right. I want to say there was, they, they ramped it up to 18 dead, confirmed. Okay. Not exactly sure. Yeah, because they said it was picture. It was potentially more victims, and it, it was two guys. I think it was brothers too. You brothers or cousins or whoever. Same, same. They got the same last name. They're family. Yeah, they're, they're a family. But they were going through the um, this. Uh, I can't even think of the group. The uh, Native American group up there. Oh gosh. But um. I saw the name of the place. It was like Saskatchewan, something like that. Yes, it was a Saskatchewan. Yes, it wasn't Saskatchewan. It was, uh, and it was an Indigenous people's uh, land in Canada. Yes, and that's the, the thing I have now. So we're talking about people bullying people online and then speaking about stuff. That's another thing I'm having issue with too. Is like the Indigenous people catching all the hell from other uh, groups, malicious groups. Yeah. Not only here, but in Australia, they've been catching hell because they've had politicians even trying to <laughs> run it on their campaign of having them actually getting kicked out as illegal aliens. Who? Ab- Aborigines? Yes, Aborigines. The, the natives in Australia? Yeah, some, oh, some yeah. Australians, yes, yes. They were trying to get the Aborigines kicked out. Yeah. Talking about their illegal aliens. But yeah, when, when your ancestors got here. Well, see, because that's like, <laughs> okay, I, I had a, a lesson in our history on this because we, we went over that part of it in the class that I had taken. Uh-huh. And we outlined just how badly they got dogged on when, when colonizers had come over there and messed with the Aborigines to the, to the extent that they're not even treated like natives anymore. Right. And now you're telling me that they're trying to get them banned as aliens? That's yeah, a politician that's... was running on her platform. So I run on that. So, so again, let's, let's just as a... <laughs> Just to catch up, it's not just unique United States problem. It's horrific everywhere. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. And then you have this attack that takes place in Canada. And first of all, it was a knife attack. So they, they was randomly going door to door. Like one of the, the Aborigines, the leader, not Aborigines. One of the, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about Aborigines now. But one of the Native American, one of the uh, indigenous people, the leaders of the group, he thought it was from like drugs. But then yeah. they come to find it was just, it was random attacks because it was just showing up at people's door and just like they stabbed the seventy year old man. He just answered the door and they stabbed him. 
Yeah, that's and this is like, but so personal. Yeah, and like when you when you do knife or by the hands, like there's this, and I write crime statistics like there's a difference where like it's a knife slash melee attack versus gun. And it gets personal there. And it's a James Smith Cree Nation. All right, for, for those that's out there. Yes, and uh, it's a uh, Damian and Miles Sanders are the the two guys. I think one of them is dead now. Actually, they found one dead. I'm not sure who were. It's, it's again it's a, I assume it's racially motivated I want to say that I, I do want to say that yeah because it's like but that's what's been happening especially like here and I mean it's been happening here for a long time we just don't hear a lot about it because we don't care about the Native yeah. Americans the indigenous people yeah, whether, whether it be the indigenous people that we know of like in, in you know the continental United States or, or the Inuit that mm-hmm. we know of as, as Eskimos and, uh, and the Arctic Circle which just happens again worldwide right um, because we had some of the what was it the uh, Keystone Pipeline mm-hmm. when they were out protesting because they didn't want the pipeline going through their tribe yeah. and of course we, you know we're capitalists we care about money we don't care about who we kill in the process of it write a check hey, it write a check right and they end up <laughs> locking them up beating them down hosing them tase- I mean it was everything possible to these people the only thing they said was just want clean water and of course corporations like oh the pipeline will never leak and never leak oh then what happened the pipeline leaked <laughs> so you arrested all of our people that was out there trying to have clean water because we didn't want your pipe being ran through our land because it's supposed to be protected land right so we don't want your pipe coming through our land because it could potentially leak because it's been shown to leak close to the can- Canadian border but you was like no we, we, we've done better we have new pipelines here you don't have to worry about that process but since you're getting in our way from actually doing work and we've already paid these politicians off we're going to beat we're going to pay these police officers off and we're going to beat you down lock you up hose you we don't care how many days you stay out here we're going to starve you we can't have anybody bring no food in and then we're going to make you leave and ultimately end up leaving and then well like i said what happened the pipeline ended up bursting mm-hmm. and all got into their water their drinking water it's it's a, it's a classic you know and this is one of many things of whether it be indigenous peoples uh whatever it be aborigines or mm-hmm. Inuit or uh this you know james hansen nation it seems it's, it, we're talking about again the two different ways they're attacked well there's many different ways but then we're talking about you know capitalism where yes. you write check <laughs> I keep it that's my short my short answer which happens you know, around the world in all different ways where like alright I have money you're in my way so I'm gonna do everything you just listed and that have that everything you just listed happens whether yeah, this is a, out of the Keystone Pipeline to hey the Olympics are coming to LA so we have to move the homeless away oh god or or, yeah. or, or hey you know like uh um, where the the World Cup is coming, <laughs> mm-hmm. we're gonna import a bunch of people, take away their passports, and now we have to, now we have a bunch of slaves. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and or we coming down to your oh. villages or your communities where it's been polluted anyway. But now we're gonna get rid of you, get rid of your slums, kick you out, clean the water up. This I'm talking about down to South America, and then in Brazil, and then we're gonna build this multi billion dollar stadium on your property where you used to live at, and somehow some way we found the money to build a stadium when we couldn't do anything about your living conditions prior to but now the, the, Olymp- the, yeah, the Olympics is coming now we're going to find this money and we're going to push you off somewhere else we don't know where you're going we don't care where you're going as long as you're not here yep. and put this up um, it's, it's called actually in the United States it's actually called cleaning Yes, yeah. You know. <laughs> literally call it clean. <laughs> where they, yeah, where they will, uh, they will uh, keep on writing um, uh, tickets to, to people that are in the way. Yep. Like especially people. Same thing happened here with the oh, yeah, the, the, the ninety six Olympics. Oh, yeah. uh, every Olympics, like eighty four Olympics. Yeah. In LA. China. <laughs> China. It's, 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 it's everywhere. You got to do Trump, like, so, The 45 so China. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're like, all right. And we just, like, literally, they. you see the people that built all the stadiums that are literally drinking out of toilets. And just, and then the people that were actually living there, they spend, like, 20 to $30 million just mm-hmm. arresting them on, on nothing charges. And, like, oh, well, you could have with the houses. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. And I'm, I'm known for calling people out. I'm not going to say who was the mayor that did it here because – He's well liked, and I don't feel like giving catching the John catching any smoke from my actions. <laughs> but he was giving millions of dollars to reallocate the people because you don't know this, uh, Mello with Jaden. But he was giving millions of dollars to reallocate the uh, low income families and the projects that was over there two places out in the suburbs and he didn't spend any of that 
on the people that he booted out of the city. Remove and relocate. Yep. That's, that's the soft term, but most of it, you know, it's just like you just uh, put them in jail. Yeah. Jail them and so they can then. And I don't get hyped up by politicians. I mean, John knows that about me. I don't care about your title. I don't care yeah. what you've done. When it comes to treating people fairly, that's the only thing I care about. But yes, back to because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, we we jumped off. But I mean, it was all in it was all in context of yeah. the whole thing anyway. But um, yeah, I'm like we got to do better about protecting the indigenous people that's from this this country. But you know, and it's like I don't know what the answer to that is because it can't be the right policy because they allow drugs to get taken place in the, in the community. Uh, people go through it, especially here in the U.S. Like, they're going to kidnap people. They have rape and crime and stuff take place and our judicial system is like, not part of us. We don't care about that. Well, I mean, a lot of it just sounds like just abhorrently bad people. I'm like, I don't... Yes. Like, you can put in as many protections as you want, but that's not going to stop, like, say, like, these companies from moving people because they're buying people off. That's, like, a person thing. You can, yes. You can put as many rules and safeguards on it as you want, but they're still just terrible people that seem to be at the forefront of all of this. So, like, you can't really legislate that away. You can try and change it on, like, an individual level, but clearly some people still don't care. No, that's what I think. Door to door stabbing people, and, like, that is more personal. Yeah, that's, that's like a gun out yeah. from a distance. You can just pop off and disassociate. No, that is you personally whipped this guy's door yeah stuck it in stuck it out more than 15 people more than 15 yeah. you, like plenty of times you've done this yeah that, I, I don't know you can't legislate that out it's, it's a hard thing it's, um, I'm coming back um, I used to live in Glen County that's where I'm on you know where the three guys you know chased them down mm-hmm. and shot them like that's and <laughs> they post the video of them doing it thinking oh see we did the right thing like what's what <laughs> like well, that's welcome so, to the south yes yeah well south and then we're talking about canada here right yeah and then we're talking about if, what on the surface again we, I, we don't know the intentions they said drugs they're kind of flopping around um i'm gonna just take take the fly take a flyer saying it was ba- you know race-based you know yeah i don't like, think it was drugs at all in the face. yeah and so but like they're walking away from this i think that's kind of what your point was um Jaden, that they thought they were doing the right thing. These two guys with knives went up there like, all right, well, this is what we that needs to happen. We have to get these people, remove them from the equation, but that will make life better for everyone else. Right. I think this actually connects a little bit because I'm processing this now. It connects a little bit with the last thing we talked about with like spreading information like this as well. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, a thing like that is taught. Like you don't, you're not, you don't pop out the womb and you're just, oh, I hate the natives here because I, I, I want the land instead. It's like you, you're. This is reinforced and imposed on you growing up to again lead you to have the confidence just go door to door start stabbing people and i'm like i think in an instance like say with the last thing where you had people who were spreading like anti-trans rhetoric and then it led to action it's like you don't part of the issue is you don't want to keep reinforcing these ideas in people like that so you in that case you de-platform people who are allowing that to be perpetuated but in this case now it's like you need to take that and do it on a much smaller scale because again it's like you can't set a law and then everyone's mind changes and it's like oh we don't hate them anymore. You just can't allow it to keep being taught. So for that area, it's like, where is this being, where's the, where are these ideas being spread at? And how do you stop them from, you know, reaching people there? Yeah. It's like an overtime thing where you need to just, again, remind people, no, you can't go door to door stabbing people you don't like. That's not how that works. Yeah, that's bull, but that's because it is incessant. It's yeah. It's just like, you know, just anyone has social media, like I see the same ideas over and over and over and over again. The algorithm points you in, in the algorithm, the, the big one. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be Google or Facebook, what do you want to call it? You, 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 yeah, you, you, you click on an article and then you're going to get their next articles for the rest of your life or be articles that you just clicked on. And thinking that same idea, same idea, same idea, just penetrating, 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 penetrating. And then not everyone's listening here, but not, but not everyone we know, but for some people they're going to go to indigenous people and stab them 18 times you know? yeah I mean because this is that's how it is and that's why everything we're talking about yes yeah, all kind of tied together I, talk, I like I like to do my topics like that <laughs> but it's like the same as the like the Muslims over in China <laughs> so the Chinese got accused of uh, spreading COVID around the world even with them doing investigation now in the Wuhan lab but what was their response to it oh we're going to like about the black people because they're the ones the Africans because they're the ones that really spread the virus around here and even though they're south of the doggone country itself but it's their fault and we're going to put them in concentration camps they did they literally did yeah. do this too yeah haven't Muslims been in camps there for like years now yes they have that's been like a long time yes and we're still doing business with them 
Yeah, well, I mean, but yeah, we bombed Libya. Oh, because inflation. <laughs> Don't forget, man. Yeah, <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> oh, 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 they jailed up uh, all the black people. All the jailed up the Muslims. Oh, they, you know, they are uh, oppressing uh, Taiwan. Oh my God, like they are threatening the world with a nuclear war. Oh my God, okay, they're they're, they're have uh, just concentration concentration camps of five and eight year olds, you know, making my my thirty dollars shoes. I really like my shoes, thirty dollars. I think we'll be okay. yeah. <laughs> I think I'll put up with all that. <laughs> but is but then they're afraid of big bad COVID. So when they close down the where the plants over there because of COVID restrictions, then it's like, okay, we need to do something else. We need to start bringing all the work back over here. When technically it's been over here anyway, but nevertheless, that's a whole different topic. Well, it's, again, I always like, you know, talk about, you were like, why, are you, why do they have all the factories over there? Well, because again, they don't pay their workers anything. Yeah, it's all slave labor. It's 100% new lines. Yeah. Like, they pay workers for a quarter of an hour and, just, and they employ eight year olds. And it's like, who wants to go to work and you got suicide nets outside of your building? No. I wouldn't want to work someplace like that. Like, I, I don't want to walk into my building and I see you got, like, if you got fly traps because people are literally jumping off the side of the building because of their work conditions. I heard about a cell phone company over there that was like that, where it was like they would have their workers in there. It was supposed to be like, quote unquote, like perfect living conditions. It's like a, you live in like a micro city all connected to that same <laughs> little business or whatever. And you, everyone just kind of works for each other and you build the phones up and they'll sustain you and you just work there and that's it. And then they had like a bunch of cases come out of people killing themselves because you were just doing the same thing over and over again. The working conditions were awful. Your production and everything was up through the roof, and it was so bad that people started doing it. So they're like, "Okay, well, we'll just put some safety nets up, and then you're yeah, you keep going." Yeah, it's more than one. Fa- yeah, it's more than one plan over there. Yeah, and it's like the the, the person I remember talking about was like they they quote unquote escaped from it. It's like you don't even leave; you have to break out. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's I know this is a sidebar topic, but they had a location that was um it was getting affected by COVID. It was running rampant throughout the one of the um places the, the plants. <laughs> And the workers was like, we're not working here because they didn't have any air conditioning too. They're not, we're not working under these conditions. They literally had the police fighting them to keep them from leaving their jobs. Mm-hmm. You can't even quit your job. It's like North. There's a, there is a correlation to North North Korea, North Korea, and uh, and China when it comes to these conditions. Human rights. Well, yeah. just a big, big wide net on that. Um, you can almost call them hostages. You know, um, I think try, try to a less degree. It's uh, you know, it's like a again cyborg, but uh, it was like I remember when uh, the World of Warcraft movie came out and just crushed in China. I didn't realize what, why. It's like they're like they're not allowed to be creative at all. They're, they're, right. they're here's what you do on your day. Like from you, you wake up. They're they're told when you wake up where to go. Here's your sandwich. Here's your eat, and then you come back home. Their only source of creativity is video games, and that's why all these like they're like why World of Warcraft all these video games. It's the only cha- like place where they can actually step out of their <laughs> state <laughs> state circle. Um, but it goes to that big question, you know, it's what's what is what is our responsibility? Is it not? Are we willing to put up not putting it by thirty dollars shoes? You know, I that, mean, that I think is the bigger that's the biggest thing right now, isn't it? Yeah, I think when it comes to this, I think when it comes to and we're and we're the, we're still talking about the indigenous people. We are talking we yeah. talking everybody as a whole, but I think jobs should come back over here to the U.S. I don't care how much they cost. I mean, if, if, I think all manufacturing jobs should come back over here. I think we should have um, developers come back over here, too. I don't, I don't like stuff. I mean, I get you outsourcing things because of, like, hours. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have enough people that can work on a third shift. Okay, well, let me outsource it to a company where, you know, it's, it's daytime over there. They, they, they have workers that can, like, backfill some of the employees here. But I think Americans should have the right to work just like everybody every other country has the right to work and I think that same way they treat other countries that's doing harm to them like I said that's why I use Libya as an example mm-hmm. when they want to police other countries I think that I don't care how rich your country is I don't care if you're a nuclear power if you know if you're mistreating your people then we should not be operating business so I don't care if we're in debt to you because we are in debt to China is that if we're seeing inhumane conditions taking place over there then no we shouldn't be a part of it well, that's where I'm like, I think part of that too is that people 
here who are getting involved with companies or just the companies themselves or you know if that's where you're aspiring for you should want to aspire for better than having to outsource all of your work to people operating in inhumane conditions just because it's easier i don't know people are just people just like rich being rich people that's like being that's, super rich and that's what i'm like that's that's obviously a problem if you're more concerned with money than you know a more sustainable outcome which is having work because you covid once covid hit and try to shut everything down like that now there's huge problems everywhere right why would you want to yeah, supply chain is just bleed. Yeah. yeah, and like, why would you want to stay in that? Like, we're going to come out of this now and you're going to keep doing business as usual. Because we're the U.S. and we're stupid. We never learn. Yeah. yeah. We, we never learn. Absolutely not. This is the thing that you- we fled a country because of their religious uh, policies they want to enforce in us. And now we're going back to start talking about religious policy all over again. Yeah. What, is, what is it? Uh, Christian what? What, what? what do they call it? I can eat because I block it out of my yeah, mind. Yeah, uh, evangelical, evangelical, evangelical Christians? No, I'm talking about as far as... Um, Christian nationalism? Yes, Christian nationalism. Yes. Well, that, yeah. Uh, no. Tell me, this is what this country was founded on. It's like, mm, we, we, no, we, it's we, no, we, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't. I tell no. you, if you if you want to go in a couple of hours, I got you on that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, when you say that, I'm like, but you talk about a country. It's like, no, this country was not founded on religion like that. It's it's you know, I, we're going in a couple different directions. That's what's one of those things. Like we're not founded on that. We're founded on couple things. I think it all kind of coincides together though because it it's, they can say that's why they're killing the indigenous people or people of uh, other faiths. Oh yeah, the people of the faiths, people of the color. Um, it's unfortunate and it's, it's you know, it's we're very nationalistic, very, yay, you know, it's Hacksaw Jim Duggan like yeah, pro wrestler USA, USA, which is nothing, you know, it's just fine. But it's also a lot of duplicitous, you know, t- double talk. Yes. You know, like we're talking about indigenous people, right? For uh-huh. example, of like, we're, should we, you know, create laws and try to figure out a, le- a way to legislate out of this? That's, I don't necessarily on the surface, it's a bad idea, but like, what has that ever done? They're like, oh, let's do this. It's like, <laughs> like a, yeah. hey, here's a treaty. Nope, just kidding. It's like, <laughs> yeah, they did it here in Georgia. Absolutely. Uh, they've done it, you know, across, you know, across the country. You know, almost every, on almost every case, I mean, I'm guessing every case. I don't think it's mm-hmm. hyperbolic to say every time we've we've had an agreement as a government, try to let do the legislation, you know, a- action with an indigenous people or whatever tribe you want to say. I I don't think it's crazy outside the stratosphere to say we've probably reneged on every single one. We have. Yeah. Um and the fact, the weird part is now that, like, even in schools, we're being taught this. Well, we're trying not to. I'm sorry. There is legislation in, in place saying that we're not allowed to talk about it anymore, or that, in fact, it hasn't happened. <laughs> and and if the legislation is not there, we're showing up to the local libraries, mm. bullying the local libraries to take books off of the shelves. And if you don't, we're coming to get you. Yeah. And so the libraries are now being forced to actually remove those books and start closing down. Which, there's again, there's two ways that's happening. One is, you know, uh, Kiwi Farms. Yes, Kiwi Farms, or absolutely. Like yes. the Kiwi, which is called the Kiwi Farms Angle. We've got a group of people that we have fired up and they're coming to your door. Or to me is even worse is like what's going on in Florida where as a government is saying, if you actually say something that we disagree with, we're gonna put economic sanctions on you. Right. Just for saying it. Yeah. Like, yeah, because what is it? You can't say, uh, what is it, the, the gay part? Don't, don't say gay. Don't say gay, yeah. But like, even as a business, like Daniel you know, Disney was like, ah, all they did was we support, you know, the LGBTQ community. And then the government comes down and says, you, oh wait, you're, you're talking anti what we have said is policy. So we're going to put my millions of dollars sanctions and all it takes away all these tax breaks. That is insidious. But I thought that, that's I thought true. Republicans don't like big government. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't want you. They, they, they don't like the government. They don't want you in your lives unless it's your bedroom, bathroom and Dr. Johnson's. But those places aren't very important. Oh, it's important. <laughs> they, they enjoy watching. But they don't want to know that they don't want you to know that they enjoy watching. <laughs> you gonna say something? Well, no, I'm just I'm just thinking because it's like the, I don't know. It, it's such a, it's such a broad issue where it's just like it really is just terrible people operating. Oh, absolutely, yes, 
Because all of these things that we're talking about is because of people's actions on social media and in their, their ignorant beliefs. Well, I think yeah. it's not even like, I, I don't even want to call it exclusively social media. I think it's social media just makes it easier to see it all. I yeah. Mean, this, this, it's not anything that has changed. It's just you hear about it a lot more now and it's a lot easier for them to do it on a broader scale. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, to me, it's like, it, it turns into a culture thing where I'm like, really, it just shouldn't be promoted anywhere. But you still have huge, huge faction to be promoting it in places of power where it's like your only fix is on the individual level at this point because nobody higher up cares. It's, it's a multiplier. Like our social media is a multiplier right now. Right. Like they've always been there, but now it's just like instead of like I said, you know, right. weird, you know, instead of a thousand, you can work out to a thousand people. All right, that's weird. Now you got millions. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. And like at least when it was like before you had phones projecting it everywhere. Like if it was the paper boy, you, you don't hear about how terrible it is until the paper boy comes to you. It's just fine. Now, it, it, you know constantly everything is terrible all the time. Yeah. It's like that, that never went away. It's just you, you're knowing it now. The problem is, yeah, you see so much of it. That's why you can't live online because if you see all the terrible stuff online, like when you get anything really positive, you have to go find positive things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know it's a problem when people are going out of their way to have to put it in front of you because you're not getting it anywhere else. <laughs> right. And then when we try to do that, you complain about the diversity we have on our TV shows. You see how I segue into that? Oh, there. We go. <laughs> nice. You see how I segue? <laughs> there we go. That's the skill there. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> so, you know, so those that don't know, we're, we're talking about diversity when it comes to our characters on the new Lord of the Rings TV show that's on Amazon Prime, which is great. The production on it is, is phenomenal. But because of the story behind it, like they have the first Latin American mm-hmm. elf and then they have uh, one of the, the she's a black. What is she's not? She's no, she's not a gnome. Um, oh, so she's a uh, Southeast Asian. The no, not the Hobbit. There were black hobbits. Yeah, but they weren't complaining about it. it which is weird. Yeah, they weren't complaining about the hobbits. Nobody complained about. Hobbits. Nobody complained about the hobbits. Yeah. It was the was it the dwarfs? I think it was the dwarfs that was in the mines. Yeah, the the prince's wife is black. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, well, <laughs> first of all, the fictional characters. Now, to a, a certain degree. I see here. I am about to be controversial again. I I kind of agree because you didn't explain why you have a Latin, a brown. I mean, you don't even know he's Latin. A brown elf. Well, now when everybody else is typically what? What are you gonna say? Well, because no, because I'm like I. That's where I'm gonna say that this borders on. I can appreciate diversity when it's intentional, but that seems forced because I'm pretty sure in the books the elves were described as white and pure. White, and white, had the exception with... of like the one leader dude who had the brunette hair. Right, still white. Yeah, all white robes and glowing. And the dwarves. And the dwarves. Were... So white. now it was not beneath them to mix and mingle with humans. So had you led a story of the well, the reason we have this guy over here is because his dad or his mom, you know, fell in love like one of the, like he was doing, falling in love with a human, and so you know this is the product of them of reproductions. But we decided to bring him over here with the elves because he has elven blood in him, so we brought him over here. No, it was none of that. Hey. <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead, John. How you feel about that, John? So I mean, I don't different. mind diversity in it because it was the same thing that happened with like in the MCU universe. With uh, Thor being now a woman, yeah. you had uh, Wolverine died. He gave his powers to the well, she didn't give his well, he, they kind of gave his healing factor to the little girl. Yeah. Then you had um, Captain America now being black. I, I just like again, all these things are like things like I, this is awful that we have to talk about it. Yes, <laughs> that's that's the way I put it. Like, you know, I've, I've been in, in, in things where like this is a heavy discussion and it just it needs to be had and it's to me it's sad that we have to have it mm-hmm. um you know so you're like you're saying like literally um, in, in the books and uh, i've read a couple of the books and it just it didn't click with me that they you know elves were purely white um i don't remember i don't remember reading that and if like the fact is that we have this this conversation and if you put an indian a brown skinned elf in there i wouldn't think twice but now that's controversial and it seems odd that it's controversial the fact that you have to explain it seems silly <laughs> well <laughs> you know, like to me it seems silly it's, it's like um but th- th- what other examples are there there was uh you know there was some marvel ca- characters that yeah all right, well, they were actually in the comic books, they're male, now they're female. Yeah. You know, like, no explanation. You don't have to explain this, it's just this, you know? Um, I think the bigger thing is, like, the the outrage. I don't think that it has to be explained, just the outrage. Yeah. Because it's, it's way out of proportion 
with what's going on. You know, right. that's that's like that's I think the bigger issue. Yeah, I don't want to like jump the gun and say that it's like it's bad because it exists. I feel like the problem that I seem to recognize is that it's like a new thing that businesses are trying. Obviously, for the sake of money, we can't deny that. It's obviously to keep a large audience. Yes. But the thing is, like, because it's new, the way they go about it, it comes off as disingenuous, and that's what becomes a problem. It's like when you randomly put in a, a brown elf, it's not inherently bad in and of itself, but you can tell when you've also done it with every other race, and it's never been done before in the other movies, that you're kind of just doing it so people feel represented in those groups. But I don't necessarily need to identify with an elf just because you threw the one brown one in there. It's like, I don't need that. I'd rather just... You just, I don't know. Just make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's the only thing. Just make it make sense. I'm yeah. fine with it. I'm fine with it wholeheartedly. I, I love the elves. I, I love the elven nation. I love the architecture. I love the powers they have. They live for a very long time. They don't age like we stupid humans do because I'm like aging like that. So <laughs> I appreciate that. But I can also see that there aren't any brown elves. And I'm fine with that. But now if you do end up having one, yeah, then just explain, you know, just mixing and mingling, because mixing and mingling happens. So I'm like, just, just explain it. Like, were there more besides that one guy? No. Because I'm like, he's just one. Like, I have to think about it genetically now. I'm like, okay, they hate humans, so obviously they're not going to just start breeding with other races. So how do you get a brown guy from a bunch of white elves going together? I'm like, you can put the science in if you want, but when you look at it, at a glance, it just doesn't make, it doesn't register. Right. That's the only thing that I'm saying, because we got to start winding down. Oh, yeah. That is, that's the only thing, we, we can talk about this more, uh, uh, next week but yeah that's the only yeah, thing let's that, warm that up we'll that, that's the only up. thing I'm saying is just make it make sense I don't mind being I don't mind diversity especially when it comes to Marvel because I mean I grew up on Marvel comics yeah. and, and DC comics I love it but it didn't have to make sense because the character was a brand new character so you you can just add them in it wasn't a, a race of piece of people but it's almost like you got Wakanda mm-hmm. and all of a sudden there's a white person in Wakanda and you don't say where the hell does white person come from, but he's a Wakandan. My first question is, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> I don't mind you being here, but yo, where did where do you come from? Or Indian person in Wakanda? I don't care. He's an Asian person in Wakanda. I don't care who it is. Where if they're in Africa, where did you come from? Just explain. Make it make sense. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pick back up on this topic. Miller won't be here next. Miller's gonna be back in uh, school. Shout out to Scott again. Well done, sir. But John, John potentially will be here. John, John is having a lot of fun with me. I hope he is. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to. So uh, <laughs> I, put on, I put on a great face. I have a great, a great face right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let Melo uh, wind us down, and we're gonna go across the table before we close out for today. Yeah, <laughs> just the stuff we talked about. I I really could drone on, especially diversity, because I I do write stuff on my own. Oh, this could this could be droned on for for hours. It, it is such a huge topic. But speaking of me and writing things, you can find the stuff that I work on. I'm a visual artist, graphic designer, and sequential artist by trade. I'm in school for that. I do do commissions, but I'm slowing down on them because I'm getting back in school. I have a Patreon, so you can find me at Patreon patreon.com slash melody artist join my one dollar tier it's a single dollar a month i know you all have it everyone here has one it's one dollar you get access to anything that i post on there and i do post exclusive content monthly cover stories you can find me on instagram where i'll advertise all of this if you search in the bar mellow.222.14 and i'm on twitter with the same handle and all that but it's not as much so just instagram patreon stick to that one well done, sir. Um, well, I, I just want to say, uh, like, kind of piggyback what you first started, like, especially on these racial issues and these big issues we're talking about. Um, the one thing I like about this format is that it's we're actually trying to get into, like, at least the, the big hitter stuff, the, the foundations of where these things come from. It always made me laugh when you on CNN or whatever it is, be like, all right, how do you fix racial relations in this country? You have 30 seconds, go. <laughs> like, all right. Like, so if I just say for, I'm going to challenge everyone out there, just two things, just, you know, think. I, you know, I've always been a pro thinker. Think about these things. Think deep, and also just don't forget uh, there is an election in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months, and so go register yourself. Make sure you're registered uh, at uh, myborderpage.com if you're in Georgia, and odds are your state has uh, some sort of equivalent. And so check it out. Make sure you're good to go, so you can uh, at least uh, punch the uh, your ballot. Yep. And I want to thank you all for tuning in. I'm glad to be back. I'm sorry I missed you all for three weeks, but I guess it wasn't much in your break because I did try to record out of town, but uh, Chicago wasn't having it. So uh, <laughs> glad to be back. I will see y'all again. And, and next Tuesday at 6 p.m. You can find this episode reposted on ptgtv.online. Until then, see you all. Love you. Goodbye.